we acknowledge the land currently occupied by Cosumnes River College as the traditional home of the Miwok and Nisiyan people. At its January 2020 meeting, the Cosumnes River College Participatory Governance Council approved the recommendation to formally adopt the use of a land acknowledgement statement that recognizes the original indigenous people of the land where Cosumnes River College has been located 50 years. Through this acknowledgement, Cosumnes River College is showing its respect and gratitude for indigenous people and their enduring relationship to the land. These sovereign people have been caretakers of the area since time immemorial. The state of California is home to more than 110 federally recognized Indian tribes, representing the most diverse set of tribal nations anywhere in the United States. Despite centuries of genocide and occupation, the Miwok and Nishinan people continue as vibrant and resilient federally recognized tribes, bands, and rancherias. The waters of the Sacramento, American, and Kasumnas rivers have nourished Miwok and Nishinan tribal communities with culture and dietary sustenance throughout time. Kasumnas of the Kasumnas River derives from the Plains Miwok language. Stemming from the words kasum, meaning salmon, and umne, meaning place of, translates as the place of salmon. Today, we celebrate our Miwok and Nisiyan tribe neighbors as the ancestral stewards of this land and honor their sustained existence. It is with their blessing and continued guidance that Kasumnas River College seeks to provide an accessible, equitable, and principled institution of learning. Trayvon Martin I'm asking you to look at all these roses with petals on the ground They call this one Tyshawn Lee I'm asking you to look at all these roses with petals on the ground It's far too many for me Tears of a mother are spilled at his grave. She knows the cost, the whole world cannot be paid. And when she should have felt our sympathy, all we told her is that her baby was guilty. And do we even have compassion? Even wanna see, oh 
never know But look at all these roses With their petals on the ground May you call this one Freddie Gray I'm asking you to look at all these roses With petals on the ground They call this one Eric Garner I'm asking you to look at all these roses With petals on the ground They call this one Sandra Bland I'm asking you to look at all these roses With petals on the ground Every woman, every man Sometimes I wonder If you were more than a number Would we ever see how beautiful And special And precious you were Somebody told me That if only, if only You would better decide You would still be alive But I'm asking you to look at all these roses with petals on the ground, like the ones from Sandy Hook. I'm asking you to look at all these roses with petals on the ground, cause they will change the story in our history books. So why we can't I'm asking you to look at all, all these roses Look at all these roses Look at all these roses With petals on the ground I'm asking you to look at all these roses Look at all these roses Look at all these roses With petals on the ground I'm asking you Michael, if you could go ahead and um, yeah, stop the. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, Professor Amari Tao absolutely is anointed doing what it is that he does best. We coming together to just take a collective breath, a collective breath as a community, a collective breath as colleagues, a breath as friends, as a family, as a college. Oftentimes, and I'm probably just as guilty as anyone, that we could get so focused on the work or the thing to do next, that we don't take a moment just to breathe together, to look at each other, 
to stare in each other's eyes and to ask, how are you really doing? And for that not to be perfunctory, to stop and to pause and say, no, really, how are you doing? And tonight as a college community, we are gonna take a moment, just a few minutes, just to look at each other in the eyes, to take each other's in, whether or not your camera's on or off, we're gonna feel your energy and feel your spirit and let you know that we are collectively asking the question, how are you doing? How are you really doing? We have gone through a lot. There are things that everyone that is on this call has gone through that no one else knows. And we also been through some collective trauma that we haven't stopped to be able to see how we are doing and how are we healing from the collective trauma that we have all experienced. And I'm convinced that we cannot move forward. Personally, we cannot move forward. Collectively, we cannot move forward as a college if we don't pause to heal from the trauma. That we would take it with us into another term. We would take it with us into our classrooms. We would take it with us in our offices. We would take it with us in how we deal and relate with one another. And tonight, collectively, we having the foresight to say that we're not going to just ignore the roses that are on the ground. Your roses may be a person that has passed away this year, as many of us in our college community have suffered loss. And we want to be able to pause and to acknowledge those loved ones and friends that have transitioned this year because of the pandemic are under the weight and the stress of the pandemic. There have been many of us who have lost some things that you need in community, a sense of belonging and connection, a hug, a, a smile, a kind word. And that has created trauma and have impacted you. And tonight we want to acknowledge that, that we want to say that we all hurt and have been hurting, that we all have been in a space of discomfort, that we all need someone and we all need each other. And that is okay. Because this is the space that CRC is setting aside to be able to heal. We're gonna do that in two ways. Um, you're gonna have an opportunity to be able to share your rose petals that are on the ground. And we're gonna ask for you to, to put that, if you're willing to do that, to put it in chat. There's, there's something powerful about giving voice to something that has been weighing you down. There's, there's something powerful about being able to communicate the loss. There's something powerful about being able to communicate the hurt and pain because when we keep it in, it takes a hold of us in a way that is not healthy that prevents us from being whole, that prevents us from being able to move forward. And so if you're willing to step into that space, we invite you knowing that this is a safe space, that you are surrounded by your colleagues that you work with every day who has your best interest at heart. So we want you to be able to put that in the, in the chat. So this could be someone that you lost, Maybe that's your rose petal. Or it could be a thing that you are mourning, you're longing for that has been lost because of this pandemic or has been lost because of the systemic inequities and racism that exists. That's been lost because you've been unable to see your family and been unable to come to work. So we pause just for a second for you to be able to just write that in your chat. Yes. We see you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Yes. Thank 
Yes. Thank you, Grant. Yes. Thank you, Robert. Sure. Some of us is missing being seen, being acknowledged, being validated. Yes, Teresa, thank you for sharing. Yes, Yolanda, Shay. And we, as you type in the chat, we want you to make, make note of this and then also with the next activity because on May, May 19th, when we come together as a college community, we'll have an opportunity to participate in a community ritual that would allow us to, again, get these things out in a way that is healthy, in a way that is being done in community Yes, thank you, Claire. And Ryan, we see Robin's health. Yeah, the fear of unknown, of the unknown, embracing the uncertainty. Yeah, living in the now, living in the presence. Absolutely. It's a lot of uncertainty in the world. This is our reflection on healing and health. Yeah, Michelle is she's sitting in me, but yeah, we could we could play music and then when we transition, you could you could have it low, you could keep it going even when I begin to talk if that's possible when we transition. It'd be great. Realize this, this is a different space for us. Yeah. That is not often that this type of thing happens at work. It's not that often that we do this um, with our coworkers. But because it's unusual doesn't mean that it's not necessary. And just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean that it shouldn't occur. Thank you for those who, who shared in the chat. If you didn't want to share in the chat, you can say it out loud, write it down for yourself right now. Share, write it down and bring it with you on May 19th. There's three things we wanted to accomplish. We, we wanted to, to break the ice around being in community with each other this way, around three ideas, it's health, healing, and the last thing is hope. Because how tragic would life be if we ever lost hope that there's so much to be grateful for. When I see your faces in the boxes, that just brings about immediately immense gratitude. That despite everything that we've gone through, despite the trauma, despite the loss, despite being isolated and separated, one thing is, it's true that's irrefutable that we are all still here. That there's folks that have battled sickness. I mean, it's, it's hard for me not to be reflective about Robin Montanez. It's just, it's, just, it's just hard. I know it's difficult to go there for me. I mean, it was rough for me. So I could imagine for Robin, she's still here. You know, our colleagues just recently lost his wife last week. That's tragic. He's still here. 
means another day for us to fulfill our calling and our purpose and our mission in life. Another day for us to be better co-workers, to be better partners, to be better mothers, better fathers, better brothers and better sisters and better to for each other. So there's a lot of hope. I want us to, to transition our, our bill, not even a pivot, because I think it's an evolution of our thoughts. It's to begin to reflect on what is it that you are hopeful for? Yeah, in the midst of still being in a, in a pandemic, yes, in the midst of still operating with a lot of the unknowns, as Dr. Oliver has said, what is it that we can find to be hopeful about? So take a minute or two. We don't allow the music to play. And we want you to make note of this. So as you have the option of putting it in the chat and we want you to, to try to narrow it down to no more than a sentence. And you're gonna have an opportunity if you choose, you can put it in the chat or you can mute yourself and just share what it is that you are hopeful for. And then we also want you to hold on to that and bring it with you on the evening of May, of May 19th. And so we'll take a minute or two to music play. Then whoever wants to mute themselves at that, that point, I'll put it in the, in the chat. Uh, we invite you to do so. who's ready and willing to, um, to share and to speak it out loud what it is that you are, are hopeful for. Our words are powerful. And sometimes even if we don't feel it, but we speak it anyway, allow something to manifest and to happen. So it's a stream power in what comes out of our mouth and what it is that, that we share. And so with that, anyone just to unmute and share what it is you're hopeful for. And thank you for all those who put their thoughts in the, in the, in the chat. Well, I'm going to share what you wrote in the chat until someone wants to unmute and say, I'm looking at Dana 
saying, having courage, seeking peace. Tadael, I am hopeful that we would get through this more united and stronger together. Greg, the simple joy of breaking bread at the same table with people from another household. Mike, I'm hopeful, wishful that each generation is a little better and a little kinder. Judy, well, thank you for making this happen. Claire, I'm hopeful to reunite with family, friends, colleagues, and our students soon, and to give hugs and handshakes once again. Not only being able to interact with people in physical proximity again without fear of health consequences. Robert, I am hopeful and faithful that this too shall pass. I may have missed some. Julie Oliver, coming back better, not back normal, back to better. Extending any last opportunities for anyone that wants to to share out verbally. And just just yes. before the call, I was preparing dinner for my son Amos, and he said, "Mommy, when's the virus going to be over?" Mm. Yeah. And just out of nowhere, he's got a show on, food's cooking, <laughs> and I looked at him and I said. Hopefully soon. What, what do you, what do you know? What have you heard? Um, and he said, I don't know, just was wondering. And I said, there's a lot of good news to look forward to a lot of hope that it will be ending soon. So I think for me that the hope of being able to tell the truth and have honest conversations with our children, our family, our friends, that it is, an, it, that there is light at the end of this long tunnel. Yeah, well, thank you, Claire. And I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that as a college community, we're going to be able to do everything it is that we have said, have written, have dreamed and imagined us being. And that the work that is produced in our college will even exceed our own imagination. That it would exceed what we even deemed as being possible about what can occur at a college. I'm hopeful for that. I, I believe that at my core, that CRC would be that institution, would be that college, that space, that environment, that classroom, that division that has been able to figure it out that this would be a magical college, that people wouldn't even be able to figure it out, even if they studied us, or what makes us so special and so unique. Absolutely hopeful for that. With that, as we wrap up, again, just a reminder, this is part one of part two. We're going to get the opportunity to see each other. We're going to get an opportunity to physically be in community with each other. What, less than a week? Maybe a week exactly? A week and one day? Front today for curbside commencement, immediately following an invitation for a candlelight vigil. Um, we think we're roughly going to start at 730. Um, I know there's been some questions. We're following the safety protocols that are outlined with curbside commencement. My hope is that folks who are participating in a vigil would also participate in the commencement ceremony and vice versa. So we would use that same safety protocol that is outlined there. Um, we are still celebrating our 50th anniversary and we have one more video left. If you haven't had a chance to watch the previous three, watching those videos are healing in and of itself. Um, Christy, 
Michael and Michelle have done an awesome job capturing this, capturing the spirit and the essence of um, CRC. Then also we wanna thank Amari again, um, just for offering his gifts um, to us. I wanna thank Tadiel, I wanna thank Christy, Michael and Michelle for putting this evening of health, hope, well, no, I'm, I always mess that up. Give it to me. Healing, health, and hope. Uh, it was a pleasure spending uh, this time uh, with you this evening. And I think Judy said it best. We're not just coming back. We're coming back better. We're coming back better. And I feel like it starts today. It starts this evening. So I appreciate you. Absolutely love each and every one of you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Be good to yourself and be good to those who love, who love you and are close to you.